the market's obviously really afraid of open AI and other techno, you know, other C changes. So they're giving Google a 13% discount rate on this model versus maybe what they deserve, six, seven, eight percent. So the bigger question we gotta think about is will open AI really hurt Google? Google kind of invented open AI. Um, open AI doesn't really have much revenue right now, maybe a billion or two versus 300 for Google. So is that something that, you know, is that something that we have to be worried about? Right? Um, Who's talking to my computer? My YouTube just started going crazy. Um, so, um, so yeah, the question is, will OpenAI you know, sort of take share from Google. And it's funny because like I use uh, Copilot uh, and I use the OpenAI API. And I'm not sure that these products have to be complementary when they, or, or that these products have to be kind of zero sum, I should say. Google search kind of lives in a different world from OpenAI in a lot of ways. I mean, uh, one might obviously take share from another but you have to consider that whatever that share is, the pie would grow, one, because the efficiency is getting better. So the pie grows, and um, Google's share of that pie won't be zero. So here's one way to look at it. Let's say there's a $500 billion market for information retrieval, for argument's sake, right? Maybe it's a trillion, I don't know. Google has 300 billion. Uh, this is sort of pre-transformer, if you will. Post-transformer. And this might take you know, sort of 10 years. This will be up, say, 80%. And uh, the, the 800 delta is coming from transformer. So, let's say, inf classic information retrieval drops a little, it's not gonna disappear completely and Transformer takes the lion's share, which is quite a transformation, no pun intended, uh, over, uh, over a pretty quick period of time. So Google keeps their market share of that market. And then of the new market, they have less market share, so let's say they have only 20% market share of the transformer market. They'd still have good revenue growth, right? And this is kind of reminiscent of Microsoft back in the day. Like Microsoft was always playing, <sighs> Microsoft was always kind of behind, right? And so, yeah, and so obviously in this scenario, OpenAI for argument's sake, kind of becomes the next, so to speak, Google. So let's say they have 30% share of this transformer market and no share of the, of the classical information retrieval market. So you have Microsoft sort of, if you think about like new and emerging technologies, cloud was one of them, cloud compute, cloud services. And so Microsoft was honestly kind of late to that market, but they jumped on it and they were able to take some share and their second place to AWS. AI is kind of another one of these things that, you know, a few of the big players will eat, the uh, upstart new companies will eat as well and they'll all kind of like share the, a chunk of this new trillion dollar market. 
assuming this is a trillion dollar market, which we have no idea. If it's not a trillion dollar market, then Google's fine, right? Um, if it is a trillion dollar market, then Google will probably also be fine, even though it'll erode a little bit their, their classical informational retrieval, which again, there are some things that, there are just some things that are not gonna change. Like for example, YouTube probably won't change at all. You know, so if you look at YouTube as a percentage of revenue, it's not enormous, it's only 10, 15%. If you include subscription, cloud won't change. That's another 10, 15%. So things like maps won't change, but you still have 50% of Google still has search. So it's possible that some of those things would change. So it seemed to me like chatbots are important, but, but Google can make a chatbot. That's, that's easy for Google. Um, and they'll probably release a product in days or weeks, right? They'll probably rush something out right now. Um, you know, any, any, any day, week or month now, you're going to see a Google chat, chat Google. Who knows what they'll brand it as, right? Um, um, with Google Cloud, I do think there is room. Um, they're obviously growing like a weed. It'll erode margins for everybody in cloud. You know, this will become like a weird business. Google, thankfully, is not that dependent on cloud. So I don't think that that matters that much either way. Um, I think the biggest sensitivity here is what's the future of the search business. That's what has gotten the market nervous about Google shares uh, and the, low, the slowing growth. You know, it's kind of a perfect storm. So you're able to buy Google for kind of an unprecedented in a lot of ways, valuation, but it's not that sort of cheap either. Let's sort of look back at the financials again one more time. This 10K just came out a couple days ago fresh off the presses. <sighs> Let's see, five nine five six eight eight three five nine six eight. All right. They've been doing a lot of buybacks. 190,000 employees. Yeah, so risk to disruption or disruptive risk to the company is, is significant. I mean, it's here's the cash flow statement. So ninety one billion in, in cash flow. Isn't that amazing? So you can buy Google. Well, we should net out CapEx to be fair. That's net of 31 billion, but that, that's, that's sort of an abnormally large amount of capex if you ask me, but we're not asking me, we gotta look at the formula. 17 times earnings, if you will, the cap free cash flow for Google. And again, some of that is fluffy. So if I wanted to cut out some of that capex, let's say look at last year's capex, and I want to add back say, What's other bets? How much does other bets lose? I think that's probably the... Uh, that's what we could add back. It's other bets, BS. I think you guys know what BS stands for. Oh, there it is. Uh, Six billion. Okay. So now you're talking about fourteen times earnings. Would you buy Google for fourteen times earnings? Well, if OpenAI is a real threat, that's sort of a fair valuation. It's certainly not expensive. 
it's really, you can't say it's expensive unless OpenAI is just going to destroy the advertising industry, which seems, at least from today's vantage point, unlikely. I could be eating my words in three or five years. But it seems unlikely. At least without any response from Google. Google just swings and misses, completely whiffs on, on a on AI-fueled products. That doesn't seem right. But Google has traditionally had pretty poor product launches, if you follow them. They're, they're not that great at it. Um, hmm. They have other costs they can cut, I think. I mean, if you completely got rid of other bets, which I think for modeling purposes, you probably should. You completely got rid of cloud. And a lot of that CapEx is related to those two things. So kicking another three billion for cloud, it's not gonna change a lot, of, a lot, right? And that, at this point, I'm kind of str struggling to make up some numbers so that I can justify liking the stock. Yeah. Just gotta keep thinking here if, if Because I, I use OpenAI every day. I wrote a book with OpenAI. I, I've wrote several books with OpenAI. I'm writing some new techniques to use OpenAI to s sort of create a stateful uh, index of ideas so that you can prompt engineer better, automated prompt engineering. Um, So OpenAI would have to inject ads based on queries asked of it, right? Or they just charge for API calls, which is how they charge me for using the, the service, which is kind of cool because it takes away from the advertising model. So that's how you sort of look at it from the, the corporate side, which I think is kind of neat. If you look at it from the, the client side, though, if I'm Toyota or GM or Walmart and I need to advertise, there's less eyeballs potentially on Google. So Google becomes less valuable advertising real estate. Maybe I migrate to TikTok or something else because it doesn't sound like OpenAI is going to be advertising fueled. It'd be kind of awkward, right, if, if advertisers, you ask OpenAI something like, well, oh, ChatGPT, what, what car should I get? And it says, well, Toyota paid me to tell you Toyota, <laughs> but, you know, it's supposed to be a super intelligent AI. It's got to tell you the truth. You know, the best car you could get is a Ford, but Toyota paid me, so I'm going to tell you Toyota. It can't be dishonest about it. Maybe it would show a Toyota ad somewhere in the interface, but... The whole point of ChatGPT is it's pretty disintermediated and abstracted from any like use. It's really like an API-based system. Um, it's possible that the end programmer uses uh, some kind of advertising model, but to me, it's unlikely. But there's still that still begs the question of whether or not declining eyeballs to Google's core assets will result in less value for their advertisers. You know, there's this crisis of confidence and that this sort of happened with Meta where people say, I don't know if this advertising is that valuable. I'm getting less eyeballs, I'm getting less click-throughs, I'm getting less revenue, why do I need to pay this company so much money? And that 300 billion in advertising revenue starts to get questioned because there's other, other focuses or foci of attention for, for users' time. Maybe it's on Amazon, who is a rapidly growing advertising business. Maybe it's OpenAI affiliates. 
that could be the future of search. We don't know for sure. And it seems like Google, whether it's through YouTube or Gmail or other tools, that Google has a pretty diverse array of properties to sort of stick advertising to. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's cheap, but it's not like gloriously cheap. It's, it's okay. You know, again, the nice thing about the stock market is you don't have to do anything, right? If something isn't a screaming buy or sell, then, you know, don't do it. There's no need to, oh shit, I ran this whole thing and I forgot to rename this variable. You don't have to buy or sell if you don't, uh, if you don't, if you're not really convinced, right, that, that you're right. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, thought Theo, Theo Tiz Beasley. Uh, that's uh, that idea that a bigger company is, has more staying power. That's generally embodied in, in a discount rate. So you would discount something like Google at eight percent, while you discount something like OpenAI at ten or twelve percent, or something like that. The newer company is entrenched, established, their, their discount rate is lower, theoretically, it's less risk. Yeah, exactly. AD Flyer makes this good point. They have BERT, Lambda, DeepMind. I mean, they basically invented AI, right? They got the guy. Uh, Hinton, who, who invented all this shit, they wrote the Transformer paper. So nobody does AI better than Google. But can you release product? Can you ship product that works, that makes sense for users that they like? That's all that matters. You know, unless you want to be a think tank or a university, you know, all that shit is in the way. You need to take that technology and make it work. Like, look at OpenAI. Like, at the end of the day, I, I think companies that use OpenAI will make more money than OpenAI. I hate AT&T and Verizon. <laughs> 